Welcome back folks, uh, yet another video here. This one a bit different, this is about doorbells. So um, I've got myself here a Ubiquiti a G4 doorbell. So uh, it records up to a dream machine I have up in the office. It's got the, the ringer, the display, the light and the camera. But I want to run with a European style um, chime. Uh, this is a ding dong chime with four poles. Now, I couldn't find anywhere online that stated uh, in, in Europe what chime to use. And the reason being is most European chimes are 6 or 8 volt, whereas this thing runs at 16 to 24 volts. So trying to get the compatibility seems to be quite difficult. And then when you do find one that's compatible, the wiring provided is different because it's 6 pole for the chimes over in the US, whereas in Europe we use 4. So I've managed to get this working already. These are just empty boxes, but I'd say I'd explain it because I couldn't actually find a way of doing it and I had to do a good bit of troubleshooting because I had ghost chimes and all sorts. So um, this should work for most of the ones from Chime or Ring and the other manufacturers because they all run on 16 to 24 volts. Um, this is Europe. I bought this from Ubiquity uh, in Europe. So it does actually say, I'll put a screenshot up here on their website. If you buy from the European store, it will supply you with a European transformer. Okay. And you don't need to buy one or the one that comes in these. Um, you don't need to use them because the voltage is too low. Uh, for those who are wondering, this is uh, like a 10 euro chime. I got the screw fix, very cheap. It's the model 24011. Um, 10, 15 euros will get them. This one doesn't come with a transformer, so if you do get one with a transformer, you just don't wire into it, you bypass it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the computer, I'm going to draw it out so I have a wiring diagram, which for me I didn't have and I wish someone would put one up on the internet. So I'm going to put a wiring diagram there that you can match to follow your own one, and then I'm going to go up to show how my installation works to show how it's going to look like in real life. So we'll go to the computer now. We'll draw it up quickly in paint and just explain the low voltage, high voltage and where you put things. And then we'll go and compare that then to the actual installation and the chime, etc. So be back in a sec. Okay, folks, welcome to the streaming setup. Now let's fly through this. So I've drawn out my setup here. So this here is our fuse box. Okay, so that's where all the panels are and the switches are in your house. Uh, this here is the transformer, which, whoops, daisy, former which was supplied by Ubiquity, but uh, I have seen you can get them in the likes of Screwfix uh, or your electric shops quite cheap. Uh, this here is the chime and this is the doorbell. Excuse my paint skills. Okay, so let's see if I can get these colors correct. We, what do we want to go with here? Well, we need brown for starters and nice and big. Okay, that looks good. So this is my light switch. Um, MCB. Okay, so we have power goes in the bottom, so we come out the top in our case, and the cable comes out of this, down, and it goes into the bottom of our transformer. Now, check the transformer, okay? It'll say 230 volt, uh, like maybe 220, 230 volts, 60 or 50 hertz on the bottom. That's going to be your main supply. That's the bit you don't want to touch, because that will kill you. And then the output is going to be 16 or 24 volt. In my case, I just had 16 volts where I had a zero and a one. But I have seen other ones where you can have 8 volt, 12 volt, 16 volt or 24 volt. But in my case, I just have two. But this is how we're going to wire. So we come out of our MCB into here. And then we come back out of this with our blue, which is our neutral. And that comes back into our DIN rail in the bottom of the fuse box. So this is our 230 volt going in, okay? So this is gonna be our uh, high voltage, okay? AKA do not touch, okay? Coming out of it then is pretty safe, okay? So we're gonna come out at 16 volts. So I'm gonna use usually low, actually, you know what? I have used different colors. I'm gonna use the colors I use just so you guys can see how I've done it. So coming back out of this, okay? We're gonna come out with our plus, that's not the one I wanted. Which one? The pen. Okay. So we come out of here. Mm -hmm. We come out of here and we go all the way down like this, all the way back in here into number three. So this is going to be our input to our chime from our transformer. Uh, now we have two cables coming out of here. So our second cable is going to be blue and it's going to come out like this, down, 
up to same joint and into number two. So what we've done here is we've supplied the chime now with low voltage. So this is our 16 volt supply to use a chime, okay? Now, this is a bit like a kind of confusing with me and I played around with the instructions that came with Ubiquity and the instructions that came with the chime and I could not get it to work. But this finally worked and caused no ghosting. So just an FYI, there is a little transformer or voltage corrector or something supplied with the chime doorbell and with the G4 that I have. Don't use that. I'm not sure why it's in there. It does show it to use it with and without a chime, but it causes ghost rings and stuff. So I'll explain it later, but we can just ignore them. Don't use it. You supply it directly here. So in effect, we need to get power to this doorbell. Um, and we're going to go through the chime. Uh, if you are going to do this without a chime, you can actually just go straight from here to your doorbell like this. Okay, just ignore the chime altogether. So that's 16 volts going straight to the doorbell, but we want a chime. So let's get rid of that and go from here. Power to the doorbell. Power coming out. Uh, I believe I use black in my case. Okay, it's going to come out zero. Three and zero are actually connected in the chime. Okay, so if you put your multimeter over those two points, you're going to get continuity. So this just goes straight through. So this is going to come out of the chime down here and into any pole on the doorbell. The Ubiquiti G4 doesn't care what pole it goes into. It just goes in any of them. And they give you these handy clips to connect into as well. Now, this is the one that I was getting stuck on and I've used uh, gray. You come back out of number two on the chime. Okay. I've tried other configurations, doesn't work, or it causes the chime to go crazy or causes the doorbell to keep restarting. But we're going to come out of two like this, down like this, and into one. And that's basically it. So this will power the doorbell constantly because there's a constant supply coming from uh, the positive because this is looped and from the negative because we're using the same terminal. So this is getting its 16 to 24 volt supply from the transformer. It doesn't care about the doorbell. But when you press the button, it sends one amp briefly down the doorbell. And when it sees the, the change in current over pole zero and two, it causes the guy in the middle here to go bing that way, dong that way. And as simple as that. So important thing to notice, be careful on this first section. You've got your 230 volt coming in and your neutral 230 coming out into your neutral bar. Supplies transformer. Transformer then comes out, power goes into pole three, and then the neutral comes into pole two. For the doorbell power, zero and two again. So let's go have a look what that actually looks like on the wall and how it kind of uh, works when I press the button. See you in a sec. Okay, so we're in the hallway. It might sound a bit echoey here, but this is the fuse box. So this is where we're going to start. This is, as I was showing in the diagram, this is the supplied transformer from Ubiquity. So this says 16 volts, but if we measure it, it's actually putting at 22. But the chime seems to work fine, and the chime is rated for 12 volts. So what I've done here is, I've actually come off number 6. Now this is my light socket. Um, you could go in with your plugs. These go through an RCD. Um, for earth leakage etc but we can go through these ones as far as I like, know because it's going to low voltage so if you're not going to low voltage and you got to touch something it should go through your CDs so you don't electrocute yourself if not uh, we're going to go through the lights and this is convenient for me because everything runs off this uh, in the porch so I have my uh, 230 coming out from here into the bottom of the transformer uh, then the uh, blue cable for our neutral comes out here and goes into neutral bar We've then got two cables coming out the top of this, which is our low voltage, which goes up into the attic and back down into our chime. So here we have our 16, or in the case is 22 volt, coming out here. So this is what I was explaining about the four pole. So we've got one, two, three, four, and I couldn't find out anywhere to wire this correctly that it will work with the doorbell. And um, just an FYI, Ubiquity and the others give you this thing. Uh, it doesn't say what it is, but it seems to be some sort of voltage protector or something. Uh, don't use this because this causes ghost chimes every couple of minutes. 
uh, I ran it on a multimeter and this outputs like one amp for a few seconds every two minutes which causes a chime so without this everything is fine no issue so you don't need to use this I don't know if it's for a bypass thing but it doesn't say I just did see that other suppliers do have that as well so eh, basically ignore this so we've got a cable here coming from our this is our supply and this is our return for our transformer so this goes into the first pole here on the bottom left I can't see it's number three okay so your supply goes in number three and your return for all the world is in number two okay now for the doorbell the polarity doesn't necessarily matter on the ubiquity one check with your other ones if you need positive and negative but these two are looped okay so these are the same if you put a multimeter over these with continuity you have continuity so these are the same these are switched okay so this and this are effectively connected together so this is my supply for the doorbell and this is the return and what happens is this is providing the 16 volts or 24 volts needed to control the doorbell and when you press the button it's going to send one amp down this cable and ding here so when this sees the, the change in the voltage this pops in and out and causes your doorbell to ring so that's the only important thing you need to know is supply in three your two neutrals for all the world or your negatives uh, are coming into number two and I believe that's zero yet so our supply going to the doorbell is zero okay and if we go out to the doorbell you will see it is against the wall here okay and we press this now actually there's a note there for leave package at door so when we press this we should get a doorbell to ring and my phone will probably go off so if we listen carefully we should hear the chime so I don't know if you heard that, we'll test again by pressing it once. Yeah, so when you press it once, it's not like a doorbell where you let go and the connection is made. Because it's electrical, it does it instantly. Okay, so it seems to work fine. I haven't had any issues in the last week. Um, yeah, the only thing you would note, if you do get blah, the ubiquity ones, these don't go to the cloud. Um, I prefer this because one, I'm using ubiquity in the house. Two, it's, it goes directly onto a drive that's in my house that I own, that's not on the cloud, and it's gonna link up to other cameras that I get to know eventually. And there goes the door, it locked me in. So yeah, I hope you guys, uh, I hope this is useful because it would have been nice for me to have it. And back up to the chime, so uh, where's my lid? I believe that just pops on nice and tidy. Oh, sorry, before I go, actually, uh, some of these are supplied with their own transformer which goes in here okay uh, this particular one should have batteries but I've seen other versions that have a transformer in here and you're designed to bring your cables into the bottom okay so your cables come up here and they're connected into these two if you have that you just ignore this don't go into the bottom just go into these connections on the top here so for all the world you want to copy this just ignore the transformer and its cables in here okay Hope that's useful guys and uh, please leave a like if it was or a comment, I appreciate it. Uh, it makes me feel better about myself. Cheerio.